All right, let's start. Hello again, everyone. Hope you are enjoying second day of the Education Summit so far. Welcome to this technical workshop on the topic of teaching modern remote sensing. I'm Kansarina Kurnia, Senior Solution Engineer with Education Team at ASRI. Some of you may know me already since I often go to university to do outreach. Before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this session is being recorded and please mute your microphone and turn off your video camera during the presentation. However, please feel free to post questions or comments in the chat windows and we will answer as many as we can during the QA sessions. And also before we continue, we would like to ask you a couple of questions, kind of like an icebreaker in here. The first one is getting to know you. So I would like to ask my, my colleague, Laura, to open the first poll question. We just want to know whether you are a faculty member or instructor, researcher, or student, or others, if there is none of them apply to you. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you kind of like 10 seconds here to answer. Thank you, it seems like it's coming. Let's give a little bit more time here. Awesome, okay, the poll closed. Let's, let's share the result here. It's great that to see like many of you are the faculty member or instructor because this is the this this session is actually designed for you, but we welcome researcher, we welcome student as well and others. Okay. Thank you. We can close that result and I'm going to ask um, Laura to help to open the second one. So for uh, all of you that are teaching, are you actually currently teaching imagery and remote sensing. Now this is a multiple choices. So you can you can choose more than one. Nice, nice. All right, we can end the poll and then, then also share the result. Awesome. So about 42% of you teach the undergraduate introductory level and then 21% of you at defense and the rest is actually um, certified, uh, certificates program, 10% and 20% uh, of researcher and not teaching. Awesome. Okay, so for those that are teaching introductory level, you're probably going to like the resources that we're going to share today. Thank you. All right, let's continue here. So now I would like to introduce our presenter for today's session. The first one is Delphine Kana. Delphine is a senior product engineer with Learn ArcGIS team. Um, Delphine has been working hard in designing and releasing the teaching material on introduction to remote sensing, uh, introduction to imagery and remote sensing. So this teaching material is designed to help the development of university level curricula on subject of imagery and remote sensing. And this is available to all of you to access and adopt and use. Then we're going to have Emily Window. Emily is the product manager with the ArcGIS imagery product team. And Emily will introduce the ready to use data, apps, and other resources to better enable you for teaching and research on imagery and remote sensing. And at the end, I will cover resources um, that we, we covered in this session and moderate the sessions. So we have a lot to cover. So without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing and let Delphine to take over. Delphine, time is yours. Yes, thank you, Rina. Um, 
sorry, <laughs> there's something unexpected, but I'm going to be sharing my screen. All right, here we are. Good. Awesome. All right, so hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to uh, tell you about a learning package, as Rina mentioned, that we created to aid the development of university level uh, curricula on uh, the subject of uh, imagery and remote sensing. Uh, first, a few words about my team, LearnArcGIS. Uh, we develop le learning materials based on real-world scenarios. We work collaboratively with experts throughout ESRI, as well as contributors external to ESRI. And all our materials are available on our website in public access. Uh, we created this package because we know that technology changes rapidly, especially in the domain of imagery and remote sensing, um, where there are constantly new tools and work workflows coming up. Uh, we know that it is hard for you as educators to keep up. So we wanted to uh, help and we wanted our learning materials to demonstrate modern workflows and current best practices. We also wanted them to be ready to use in the classroom or as assignments so that you instructors could save time. Uh, we developed this project collaboratively with our uh, colleagues from Esri's imagery team, as well as several other experts. The results, uh, Introduction to Imagery and Remote Sensing, offers a growing body of materials. Um, it is free to use for all audiences. It is organized by themes. Um, the materials are introductory level and cover the basics of imagery and remote sensing, but we also wanted to give a taste of engaging techniques such as working with drone imagery, LiDAR point clouds, and deep learning. So there are three types of learning materials in the package, interactive web apps, hands-on labs, and overview slides. The interactive web apps are meant as short activities to illustrate a fundamental remote sensing concept, such as spatial resolution or visualizing change. Uh, you can use them in the classroom to demonstrate a concept, or you can assign them as short uh, homework. Hands-on labs are in-depth exercises that enable students to experience end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, while gaining an understanding of how imagery and GIS technology can solve real-world problems. Um, they take from 30 to 90 minutes to complete, and you can assign them to your students in their original form, or you can also adapt them to your teaching needs. They are based on engaging scenarios, such as measuring a shrinking lake in China, tracking the development of the Suez Canal over time, uh, exploring a volcanic eruption in Hawaii and more. They demonstrate a number of techniques um, like choosing band combinations and spectral indices, uh, unsupervised and supervised classification, change analysis, object detection with deep learning, uh, working with LiDAR point clouds, drone imagery, time series data, etc. So we very much hope that several of them will be of relevance to your course. Um, we also have overview slides that cover fundamental imagery and remote sensing concepts. They are offered in PowerPoint um, and you can reuse them as desired to support your teaching, like text specific slides, whatever you decide to do with them. Um, in terms of software, we focus primarily on ArcGIS Pro. We also use ArcGIS Online, um, ArcGIS Drone to Map for lessons relying on drone images as well as some web apps for the most introductory materials. I will now give you a short demo. So this is the website. Um, this is the homepage. Um, you can see here that um, it is subdivided in five uh, sections, which you can also find at the top here. Uh, so if we look at the first section, um, discovering imagery, we are focusing here on understanding imagery fundamentals. And you can see an example of a hands-on lab. 
uh, get started with imagery, which exposes the students uh, to various uh, uses of, of imagery. At this point, this is very much exploratory. Um, you can see here some of the interactive web apps, uh, for instance, on um, exploring imagery, special resolution, or exploring bands, etc. Then on section two, we have working with imagery, uh, where we focus on imagery workflows and start processing imagery. Uh, for instance, here we have um, a, a hands-on lab on uh, ass assessing burn scars with satellite imagery, um, as well as uh, preparing and rendering imagery uh, with, again, more uh, web apps um, uh, and, uh, um, and labs. Um, section three, extracting information from imagery. Now we are starting to uh, look into image interpretation, image classification, where we look at different types of um, classification. For instance, here calculating impervious surfaces uh, from spectral imagery um, using um, a, a supervised classification. And we also have examples of unsupervised classification a little bit lower in the, the analyzing change section. So analyzing change, looking at how uh, things change over time. Um, we have the example here of uh, classifying land cover to measure shrinking lake uh, in China, which is an example of unsupervised classification. We also have uh, examples with deep learning as well as looking uh, at performing thematic accuracy assessment. In the fourth section, working with elevation and time, now we are we're going beyond uh, multispectral imagery, uh, looking at things like working with uh, digital elevation models, uh, LIDAR and 3D uh, visualization, working with drone data, uh, and multidimensional and temporal data. And finally, section five, leveraging the power of GIS. We are sort of circling back. That is showing that once you have uh, processed your imagery and you have extracted information, interesting information out of it, you can now integrate uh, this information, those new layers into um, typical GIS workflows, such as this one, which uh, uses a suitability analysis to find suit um, suitable uh, sites for uh, sustainable shrimp farms uh, in uh, uh, Costa Rica. We also uh, look at how you can share your results online. Uh, for instance, in this lab, we create a, a web app that presents uh, the effects of a mudslide with a sort of a before and after effect. So I want to just show you a couple of um, samples of uh, the items that we have. Uh, here is the each section has an uh, overview uh, slide deck, and I downloaded uh, this one for you. Let me just, yes, here. So this is how it looks. So, you know, a bunch of PowerPoint slides. Uh, here we have, uh, as an example, what's the difference between raster vector and raster data. Um, if we have a little bit, uh, let's see, lower, we have, for instance, here, the effect of ground sample distance, et cetera, defining uh, a number of uh, essential concepts. We also, I want to show you an example of um, um, an, an interactive web app. So we look at Paraguay through time. Um, this is an example where we, um, so very simple, we are learning about uh, analyzing change. We look at a specific example, have a quick explanation of what this is about. And then we have this very simple um, app, which allows you to swipe and look at the difference between uh, uh, the Paraguayan uh, Atlantic forest ecoregion in 1973 on the left and in 2000 on the right. You can also um, zoom in to look at uh, 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 the change in more details. Obviously, we're seeing here that a lot of deforestation has happened, as well as some uh, strong changes in some of the water bodies uh, due to uh, dams. And uh, finally, I'm going to show you, um, I'll just have to go back to my, yes. Um, I'm going to show you an example of lab. Um, so this is, um, yes. 
we are here assessing hail damage in cornfields with satellite imagery. So this is based um, on a, a scenario. All our lessons are based on scenarios. So this is an, an actual event which happened where we actually, um, there was a hailstorm in Alberta, Canada which had a, a, a strong uh, impact on the cornfields and a lot of damage was uh, done. And so we are going to be uh, analyzing this change and assessing the level of damage in various fields. So you can see how our um, uh, lesson, lessons, let me see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. Hold on. Yeah, here we are. So we can see how um, our lessons are step by step. Uh, there are lots of um, illustrations uh, so that the student can really orient themselves. Um, and we give a number of explanation on how to do things and also why we are doing things, what it means. Um, you can see, uh, you know, for instance, examples here, we are talking about a spectral signature for various types of, um, of uh, co co uh, cover. And so to make things a little bit more lively, I'm going to show you this workflow that the students perform uh, in uh, ArcGIS Pro actually uh, live. So let's see, where, here we are. So when the students open um, the project, they download the project with all the imagery included, and they open the project in Pro. And the first thing we are asking them to do is they see the two uh, images before storm and after storm. And uh, they can swipe to look at the difference between the two. And we can see that uh, the top one is uh, uh, before storm. And then we see here the one that is um, after storm. And we can see that, yes, something has happened. But it's not really clear. We can't really assess the change quite as um, instantly. Um, so we're going to, of course, do more. Uh, what we are also going to do is hmm, <laughs> The Zoom interface is hiding part of um, the top. I don't know how to get rid of this. Um, OK, let me see. I might have to make this a little bit smaller. I'm sorry, because otherwise I literally cannot access. Sorry about that. OK, let me try to make it as big as possible. Uh, nope. OK, sorry about this. All right, I think it will have to do like this. Okay, so what we're going to do um, next is the students will use the, um, let me first go out of swipe. Okay, so the uh, students will use the image information tool, which is a really interesting uh, um, tool to uh, get a sense uh, live dynamically of the values of the different bands that you can see on the right-hand side of the screen right now. And you can see the uh, blue, red, uh, sorry, green and red bands, as well as near infrared represented here in gray. And we learn in the lesson that, uh, of course, red and gray bands are essential to assess vegetation um, health. Uh, we next are going to be um, computing a vegetation index on each image, starting with the first one, the before storm. We do that by going to indices, and we will choose the SAVI um, index, which uh, is a, a well-known index for assessing health index that uses the red and near-infrared uh, bands. So all we need to do is um, provide uh, the correspondence that is said that the near-infrared band in our image is the fourth band. And then the red, uh, inf uh, red band is the third band. And here we get the result, which is um, a, a raster where the white, uh, whiter areas um, correspond to the healthiest vegetation. And then the darker ones correspond to either unhealthy vegetation, dying vegetation, or unvegetated areas. We do the same for the second one. So same thing, fourth, third. All right. And now that we have the two, we are going to compute the difference between the two using a raster function. All of this is done dynamically. You see it's very quick, very fast. Uh, so we use the compute uh, change raster function. 
um, indicate that we want to do the difference between uh, the after uh, savvy uh, raster after storm and the before storm uh, savvy raster. And this is our result, which uh, where the um, the, the darker uh, purple um, areas uh, show the, the fields that have been the most affected by this hailstorm. And I don't have to show you uh, the time to show you like the end, the, the, the rest, but I will show you the final result where we um, actually use, show it to you by putting it at the top, we use um, a zonal statistics as table to compute for each field of interest uh, its average loss in vegetation, in, in healthy vegetation, uh, with the lower areas in yellow, um, uh, if I, going from the, the lower, um, uh, the low damage um, in yellow to the highest damage in dark red. So this is, um, this was just a quick overview. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I think I am going to stop here because I have um, uh, filled up my time. So, um, Yes, um, Rina, uh, I think it's back to you. I'm going to stop sharing. Perfect. Thank you, Delphine. I think all of us can see that this teaching material have a lot to cover. Rich content, slide decks, interactive web apps, hands-on hands lab exercise and activities as well, including the data set based on the real world scenario. I know that as educators, most of us have no time to really update our course materials regularly. So this package can be a great help. And you can pick and choose the lessons that you like to incorporate into the class. You can customize. Um, you can actually also work with us, such as if you want to contribute other content and lesson as well. Again, this package is available now at no cost. You can download it, you can customize it, you can inter interact with that, but we were looking forward for any feedback from you so we can continue to make it better. However, this package is not the only one that you can help you with your courses. Emily will also bring another additional resources that can help you for teaching. So Emily, time is yours. Great, thanks, Rina. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm going to spend some time uh, talking about resources from Esri that you can use to enrich and build on the imagery and remote sensing curriculum that Delphine just talked about. Um, first, I'm going to provide a really brief overview of imagery and ArcGIS just for some context. Um, so the imagery capability is really shorthand for a ton of functionality, um, which we generally divide into five sub capabilities, which you can see here. Um, so content uh, refers to both the content that we support as well as online imagery, terrain, and GIS layers that we provide from the Living Atlas. And we'll get a look at that in a second. Um, image management capabilities let you catalog, publish, and consume imagery efficiently and securely. Uh, with image mapping, you can create authoritative maps and products like ortho mosaics, DEMs, or 3D mesh um, from the imagery collected by drones, aerial sensors, or satellites. Uh, with image analysis, ArcGIS provides advanced analytical tools to extract location-based information from imagery, including image classification, change detection, deep learning, and more. And image visualization leverages human interpretation to extract information from imagery. So that includes user experiences that are built for motion imagery or stereo, um, intuitive search and discovery interfaces, uh, and tools for sharing and telling stories with your imagery. Um, so the result is a really rich system for anything that users want to do with imagery. Um, so that's how we understand and talk about the imagery capability in ArcGIS. Um, but it's also important to understand that when we're talking about ArcGIS, that can refer to desktop, enterprise, and software as a service deployments. Um, so in a desktop environment, software is installed and accessed on a personal computer. Um, in an enterprise environment, your organization installs and manages the software on your own servers uh, for the use of a lot of users simultaneously. In a SaaS environment, we host and manage the software and sometimes the data, uh, and you access it via the internet. So here you can see that each of Esri's flagship offerings um, in each environment, uh, for each of them, there's an imagery extension. Um, so all of those extensions are sometimes referred to together as ArcGIS image, um, which is a suite of products deployed to implement imagery capabilities. Um, so how you implement those really depend on your organization. 
um, all of those imagery sub capabilities we talked about are represented across all three environments. Um, and then we both also have focused imagery applications that stand on their own, but can also be integrated with the rest of ArcGIS. So as we start discussing imagery resources, I'm going to focus on SaaS offerings for content and for telling stories with your imagery um, that you should be able to leverage as educators. So let's take a look at some of those resources um, that you can use to expand your curriculum. So we'll start with imagery and apps that are just ready to use out of the box. So the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World provides a really massive collection of ready to use authoritative data layers um, accessible via the internet, curated and prepared for easy integration with ArcGIS. So while there are a number of useful layers, uh, including feature data sets, rasters of environmental variables, all kinds of stuff, I'm gonna highlight the imagery resources. So Landsat satellites uh, have been continuously gathering medium resolution multispectral images of the globe for almost 50 years. Uh, Esri's Landsat service now contains more than a million individual scenes with new scenes added daily. The multispectral Landsat layer includes both the full Landsat 8 imagery archive and the historic GLS epoch imagery, which extends back to 1975. Uh, it also comes packaged with a collection of band combinations and indices that are rendered on demand, uh, some of which um, you saw uh, how quickly that can work in Delphine's um, demo, and we'll see some in action with Sentinel-2 in a second. So currently, this is analysis-ready data with a top of atmosphere correction applied, but we're in the process of releasing a new service comprised of Landsat 8 Collection 2 Level 2 imagery, which will provide you with atmospherically corrected data um, and look for that service in coming weeks. So Sentinel-2 is an Earth observation mission operated by the European Space Agency since, since 2015. Um, Esri's Sentinel-2 image service is updated with new 13-band imagery daily and includes all Sentinel-2 scenes going back 14 months. The imagery is analysis ready with top of atmosphere correction applied. And similar to Landsat, it also includes a collection of band combinations and indices that can be visualized on the fly. So the National Agriculture Imagery Program uh, typically produces 0.6 to 1 meter resolution four-band imagery for about half the continental US each year. So NAEP image service includes all NAEP imagery published since 2010. And with the attached rendering options, it can also be really quickly visualized using a color infrared band combination or NDVI. Um, the world imagery is a tile layer offering one meter or better satellite and aerial imagery in many parts of the world and lower resolution satellite imagery worldwide. So perfect for an imagery based map. The Art Living Atlas also provides foundational elevation layers that support analysis and visualization across the platform. So by default, the service returns 32-bit floating point elevation values that are appropriate for analysis, but it also includes rendering options to visualize hill shade, slope, aspect, and more. So these imagery resources are generally appropriate for both visualization and analysis. Uh, though there are some restrictions on the scale of analysis. Um, they can be consumed via the internet in ArcGIS Pro, in the map viewer in ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online, or consumed and shared via web apps. Um, if you're interested, I'd recommend you checking out the tutorial on using image services in ArcGIS Pro uh, that's linked at the bottom um, from the Imagery Workflows website. So in addition to these services, Esri also provides a collection of apps that do a good job of demonstrating what's possible with these services um, and also serve as useful teaching tools on their own. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these apps, the Earth Observation Explorer, uh, featured in a story map. So we're gonna use this app to explore a recent volcanic eruption in Hawaii. So on December 20th, 2020, the Kilauea volcano erupted. It spilled lava into the crater, boiled a water lake away, and replaced it with lava 700 feet deep. So we'll use the Earth Observation Explorer app to visualize and explore imagery of the eruption. So we'll navigate to the Hale Mau Mau crater, and then switch to Sentinel-2 imagery.
And with a natural color band combination, it can be difficult to really see what's happening in the image. So we could create a custom band combination in the app, as you can see here. Um, however, in this case, we're actually going to use a rendering that's attached to the service, the shortwave infrared rendering, which has dynamic range adjustment for better visualization. So now let's take a look at the individual Sentinel-2 scenes before and after the eruption on December 20th uh, to see how the eruption progressed. So the extent of the lava is really clear with that shortwave infrared rendering. Um, and as we're looking through these images, uh, it looks like the January 7th image looks relatively clear. Um, so we'll go ahead and examine that image more closely. So first we'll look at some spectral profiles from the image. So here, if we click the lava, we get a very distinctive spike in the shortwave infrared reflectance that you can see here. Um, and if we click the surrounding land cover, the spectral profile of the cooled lava seems most similar to the impervious surfaces found in urban areas. So we can also look more closely at the spectral dynamics of the image with an interactive spectral scatter plot. If we plot bands against each other, we can identify relationships between these bands that correspond with different land cover. And by circling groups of pixels on the plot, we can see where they fall on the map. So here, areas with low near infrared reflectance and relatively high shortwave infrared, for example, appear to be molten lava. And here, these pixels appear to be smoke or clouds and areas with low near-infrared reflectance and low shortwave infrared reflectance seem to be cooled lava around the center of the crater. So when you take a look at the story map, you can check out this app for yourself or go directly to the app. Um, and be sure to check out the masking and change detection tools also. All right. So while those services and demo apps are really useful, um, it can also be really powerful to create resources that are tailored to your own curriculum. So story maps are a really great way to integrate images, video, GIFs, interactive maps, and more to tell a story. Um, these aren't designed explicitly for imagery, but they do offer a really powerful way to tell stories about imagery or a vehicle for incorporating your imagery to tell a powerful story. So in addition to the example story map you just saw, um, the URL links to a gallery of story map examples that incorporate imagery in interesting ways. Um, so I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, next, configurable apps for imagery are intended to allow you to create focused apps for exploring imagery, um, for exploring and visualizing imagery layers. So as Delphine discussed earlier, apps built using these templates are actually incorporated into the remote sensing curriculum. Um, if you find them useful, it's not that difficult to build your own. So there are three designed for imagery. Um, imagery Viewer is the most basic with tools to explore imagery through time and space with a swipe tool to help you compare. Image Mask is designed to interactively highlight areas of change between two images in a service um, or to highlight areas that meet a user set threshold for common indices. So areas that are above 0.25 NDVI, for example. Um, Image visit lets you review a predetermined sequence of locations in imagery, so you can review attributes or identify features. Uh, we've used this for validating deep learning results, for example. So to build a configurable app, you author a web map using Map Viewer Classic, share the web map as an app, uh, configure your app settings, and then publish and share the app. Uh, so let's build an app for exploring and visualizing how Las Vegas land cover has changed over the last 30 years. So all configurable apps start with a formatted web map, which you can then share as an app. So we'll use the imagery viewer to create our web app here. So once the app is created, um, it'll take you to the express settings, which you can use to configure the most important settings. So in the about section, we can add a details tool to help the user understand what the app is and how to get started. In the interactivity section, we'll configure a swipe tool so users can compare images. And then in the theme and layout, we'll rearrange the tools um, so that the app is configured the way, formatted the way we want it. 
So at this point, I could switch to the full setup to access more advanced settings, but I can also publish a perfectly serviceable app from here. So the app we've created, um, which will show up in a second, is designed to illustrate how Las Vegas land cover has changed between 1991 and 2020 using Landsat imagery. So you can compare dates using the swipe. Um, you can use bookmarks to explore areas of interest. You can see um, the census tracts that I added um, and the pop-ups from the web map, web map um, can be used to add context. We can change dates to explore change through time in the city. So overall, these apps allow you to create resources that focus on current events or areas of interest for your students um, or on a specific part of your curriculum that may not have been addressed uh, with the existing tools. So the resources I've discussed up until now are probably most useful for introduction level instruction. Um, but where should you start if you're interested in diving deeper into basic ArcGIS concepts or exploring more, adva more advanced topics? So feature extraction using deep learning or analyzing time series imagery. The imagery workflow site is intended to be a jumping off point for common imagery workflows in ArcGIS. So the site has three types of content, the workflows, which aggregate resources from across Esri to support common imagery tasks, tutorials, which provide step-by-step -step instructions and sample data to help you get started, and best practices, which offer deep dive information about optimizing your workflow for efficiency, scalability, usability, different data types, and more. Um, so let's take a look at the site. Um, so there are quick links at the top to the full gallery of workflows, um, imagery tutorials, uh, best practices, and a collection of open source imagery tools. Um, the workflows are organized by sub capability to help you find relevant content faster. And you also see featured imagery workflows, which are generally the newest or most up to date content. Um, so let's go ahead and check out the full gallery of workflows, um, which are really the core of the site. So you'll see that if I start searching for classification, um, two workflows appear. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the one for performing image classification. Uh, each workflow explains the ArcGIS solution to a common imagery problem. So in this case, performing image classification. It then links to helpful resources from across Esri to help you solve it. So with each workflow, you'll find links to help, um, to blogs, story maps, videos, learn lessons, trainings, um, developer resources, GitHub repos, um, information from tech support or from the Esri community, which used to be GeoNet. Uh, and you'll also find links to um, the tutorials and best practices where relevant. So it's really just a one-stop shop for supplemental resources from Esri uh, organized by topic. And that brings us to the end. Um, so I really hope you'll take advantage of Esri's resources to help supplement and customize your curriculum. And I'll hand it back to Rena now. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. That's really great. So everyone, the message in here is you get a, a lot of resources in here. It's the, um, the one that built by um, Learn Team and also by the product teams, Emily, ready to use data sets, apps, um, um, also the um, other content. Let me share my screen now. So we do have a lot of resources and we would like to continue help you to update your teaching material or to use it for your research. So I list them all in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste uh, into the chat. Uh, we still have about six minutes for the question and answer in here. So I think um, I would like to start with with Scott. Scott um, is, um, I already like talked with you several times during the email about the teachings with the uh, remote sensing. So the question from you, Scott, is I, you teach the remote sensing with a variety of students, some for whom do not have previous GS experience, then, and um, 
and all the lab exercise assume prior experience with ArcGIS Pro, or are they structured that they can be completed student with no GS background? Uh, Delphine, would you like to, to elaborate more on your answer on that, please? Yeah, yeah, I, I did put a quick answer uh, to that effect in the in the chat. But yeah, no, so there is no prior uh, GS experience required, um, and there is no uh, pro experience required, because we know that many students who study GIS, they, uh, study remote sensing, have not done GIS before. We, um, in fact, at the beginning um, of um, this whole uh, endeavor, when we started this project, we uh, spoke with a number of um, educators and they told us that very clearly. So we uh, made sure that this is not the case. So we do explain the concepts as much as possible. And then also because we have this step-by-step -step approach and all those screenshots, it really helps the students be oriented in pro so they don't have to like know where to find such and such tool. Um, so it should really work out for students who don't have much experience in GIS or pro. Okay, that's a good question as well here, uh, Delphine. Will these lessons will be updated when a new version of Pro is released? Yes, we are working on it. <laughs> we, uh, it's always uh, as you as you yourself know, if you have uh, workflows that you maintain, it's uh, always um, you know there are always new wonderful versions that come out of the software. And so our team, we do have people who are testers, and we try to get uh, to them as soon as possible. And so our commitment is to keep them as updated as possible, so that you don't have to do uh, that that uh, extra effort that you know working on a workflow and you're like oh things have changed a little bit uh, with this new release of Pro or awesome. other software. Awesome. And also, uh, I believe the Emily teams will always update it, the workflow, what is new. Yeah. So I gonna want to also put the attention for you to the resources. Uh, we will have a new MOOC, which is a very brand, one, brand new one in imagery in action. So it's going to be released in August 11. So, uh, the registration is open now if you want to uh, to join you or your students would like to join so i'm excited i'm also register for that and we also have the link there the last link that i give you in the chat is imagery and remote sensing e-learning guide laura borden's comprehensively put all the lists from s3 academy learn um, all the lessons that you can also adopt as well so i copy and paste um that um link to the resources and the chat there and what we want to do is actually we really want to build the community uh, for all these educators that teach remote sensing because remote sensing is high in our priority as well so if you need any assistance if you like to talk more with us if you want to actually contribute to the lessons or would you like us to help you uh, updating uh, your uh, curriculum or content, feel free to contact me. I put my email there. Um, and, and Delphi and Emily and all the team at S3, we work together. So we're going to pull the subject matter expert for you as well. All right. Is there any question that I missed, Delphi or Emily or Laura? I think it was still have two minutes. Thorough. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll add one more thing, which is yes. that uh, I, I saw some question about people um, asking sort of, you know, whether we, there were some questions at the end for, of our labs for, you know, for grading. Mm -hmm. We do not have that. Uh, we have um, uh, professors use, our educators use our, our labs in different ways. Some of them will ask maybe for the students to do a quick report or give some specific screenshots uh, along the way. Uh, some others will also ask the students to do the workflow once following our guidance and then we'll give a new set of imagery and ask the student to apply what they learn in our workflow onto uh, the new imagery, which is a great way to test whether the students really absorbed um, all the all that was explained in the, in the lab. Yeah, I like as well the, the answer from Lisa that said that she has her student to submit the final imagery or map into the organization ArcGIS online so the professor can see. Or you probably can ask the student to create a story map based on the, what they learn and um, so they can apply it to another scenario. So that's really nice. All right. Um, 
Okay, so uh, Roderick said, does it always has to be about grading? Can, can we <laughs> not see the pathway of learning of beautiful learning? <laughs> yeah, true, true. Lately, you know, there's many different form of grading, I guess, you know, it can be like, tell me the story about your learning. So very good. All right, I think we reached the top of the hour here. Um, thank you so much. Again, um, uh, if you still have any question, if you want to contact us, my, I put my email there. I can put as well my email. Um, and then Delphine and, um, if, and Emily, if you want to put yours, you're welcome as well. Okay. So as I said, that's, we, we work together closely. Laura, I written it back to you, the session. <laughs>